everything makes sense if you look at it in context now all put together right it kind of makes sense so you got this application on your phone which is digital currency you're given two thousand dollars a month from basic income Okay, we have ma major economic problems are coming. Our money's being devalued. Inflation is at an all time high. So I believe that this is a solution to the economic crisis that they actually know is coming. If you're anything like me, you're wondering what's going on. Well, I'm, I've been thinking about it for a couple days and I've been trying to figure it all out. And I think I got a pretty good. I put it together pretty nicely. Okay, and I'm going to I'm going to let you know what I think, and you're going to let me know in the comments what you think, but I think this makes sense. All right, so let's see here. Money's devalued. Inflation is up, right? We know these things. Money supply is up. I'm going to show graphs. I'm going to show stuff in a minute here. Uh, so money supply is up. Inflation is up. Interest rates are pretty much flat, and they've been flat for a long time. And at the same time, we're scratching our heads. We're wondering, okay, hey, what's happening? We know this digital ID. We know the CBDC. What is that? That is the central bank digital currencies coming out. Why? You're, you're wondering what's going on economically. You're thinking, hey, house prices are crazy. I'm living in my mom's basement. Why is this happening? Well, let's take a look. And I'm going to show you what I think is going on. I think what it's happening here, they knew this was going on. And when I say they, I mean the central planners, Bank of Canada, you know, the Fed in the States. Uh, they've known what's happening, but it just... They just didn't really know what to do, but this was sort of the outcome, right? They, this is the solution. They truly believe they're they're doing something that's great, that's going to help the economy, uh, and but then again, it's also going to remove some of our freedoms. We're going to take a look at all that. Let, let's let's get into it. Okay, so right here, what are we looking at? We're looking at the Canadian interest rate. All right, USA and Canada, the two interest rates for Canada and the USA. Uh, the states, you can see they're pretty much nil, okay? And they've been very, very low for at least since 08, right? That was the that was the first crisis, the financial crisis of 2008. Uh, in the states, it was low. It kind of boosted up there for a bit. It's been low. All right, next, we're looking at inflation rates, okay? So you can see inflation, and these are CPI. And the thing is, a lot of people take issue with these numbers. They think they're higher, the rest. I'm not an economist. I'm not going to debate all that. I'm not going to discuss, but these are just reported and just looking at reported inflation rates, uh, you can see that they're going higher and higher. U.S. is set to cross into double digits. Canada is always, I mean, U.S. is our biggest trading partner. What do you think is going to happen in Canada? It's going to be the same problem, same mess. So quantitative easing, let's take a look at what this is. This is increasing the money supply. So this is a tool that the U.S. federal uh the U.S. Fed, they use this specifically after 2008, the crisis of 2008. They use this tool, which increases money supply, puts more money. But they don't say they're printing more money. They say they're actually it's smarter. They've got some trickery here. Let's read it. When a central bank decides to use QE, it makes large-scale purchases of financial assets like government and corporate bonds and even stocks. This relatively simple decision triggers powerful outcomes. The amount of money circulating in an economy increases, which helps lower term interest rates. This lowers the cost of borrowing, which spurs economic growth. So I just want to put this into context here, okay? Because QE is a complicated topic, and really you got to have an e economic background to really make sense of it. And to be honest, I can't really explain to you the details of it, okay? I'm only just learning myself. But I'll tell you this much is that QE, this, this incredible money supply increase, happened after 2008 in the States. Uh, they followed, a, the, the Japanese used this before that, uh, when they had a big economic problems. Then the U.S. started doing this since 2008 and it hasn't stopped. Canada has only really started doing this since this health crisis, the recent health crisis in the last two years. And this has increased the money supply tremendously. Let's look at some graphs. Okay, first one right here, M3 is a measurement for money supply. Uh, you can see here that the uh, the amount of money supply is just astronomically increasing. That's for the U.S. Canada, same thing. Money supply just through the roof. And then this kind of leads me to, now you put all that together. You've got inflation. You've got low interest rates. You've got house prices, asset bubble, okay, at least in Canada, massive, massive bubble. So what's what's the reason for all this? What's happening here? Well, what I think it is, very simply put, is that the the you know economics the actual the actual uh, economy has been in tatters and the central you know planners these these people who really consider themselves to be super smart 
who sit there debating, thinking about this all day, they know we're kind of, it's screwed. Basically, it's screwed, okay? That's what's happening over here. And that's the reason, that's the reason they're coming up with basic income. What are the odds that basic income one year ago during this health crisis has been brought in, introduced in Canada? You tell me, what are the odds specifically that basic income right here in Canada is being pushed through? Okay, it looks like it's going to be fast track. This is just moving along well on its way. What are the odds? Because I think what's happening is they know, okay, they know that people are going to be suffering if they start when they start increasing interest rates, which they've been talking about. People are going to be suffering. There's a lot of people who are going to have big, big problems. And that's what basic income is. So you couple that. Imagine that. You got an app on your phone that gives you this government you know, this fiat, right, which is the government money that's issued to us. It's not backed by any commodities. And then we got that on our phone. They helicopter drop, okay, helicopter drop money into our accounts. And that's a tool they truly believe they can use to increase, you know, to help the economy heat up. Because what they can say is this, hey, you got, you're on your phone, you got brand new money, you got money on your phone, but it's only good you know, for grocery or for, I don't know, uh, construction material, and it's only good for a month. They can literally do this. They can have you on your phone and you can get these numbers in your account that are only valid at certain times. They call them helica helicopter cash drops. So they really think this is better economic control for them. This is a method they can use to control and, and, and to make the economy work better. Now, of course, it's got these knock-on effects that if you can turn on and off people if they're politically undesirable, but that's another issue entirely. I'm just trying to lay out the entire thought process behind it. I think I've, I've I cracked the code. I know a lot of smarter people have talked about this than me, but this is just my simplistic method of putting it together, and I hope it helps you. Right over here, this is just on March 16th, the Bank of Canada announces one year ago in February 2021, they had actually tendered proposals from universities, three universities in Canada said, hey, we're going to investigate and do put these proposals together about how this central managed bank uh, digital currency can work. Now they're announcing, Bank of Canada is announcing that they're actually going to be working with MIT. MIT has something called Open CBDC, and I'm going to be researching it. It's a C++ program. They put the code up. Anyhow, I'm a programmer, so I'm going to take a look at all that. But I mean, they are well on track and everything makes sense. If you look at it in context now, all put together, right? It kind of makes sense. So you got this application on your phone, which is digital currency. You're given $2,000 a month from basic income. Okay. We have ma major economic problems are coming. Our money's being devalued. Inflation is at an all time high. Uh, so what happens next? You know, this is it. It's all lines up. I actually believe that they think okay that they're actually helping the situation by you know basic income and this centrally managed digital currency where they can inflate and deflate and they could play all kinds of games with how much money you got in your account depending on is it a saturday morning we want to stimulate sales on a tuesday evening so you get a bonus of 10 percent you know 10 percent off of all your transactions they can really do some centrally managed amazing things Right. As a technologist, I'm just thinking here, the amount of things they can do is astonishing. They can you, you just got to think about it. Right. Because they can alter and they can change the these numbers depending on a huge set of variables. So I believe that this is a solution to the economic crisis that they actually know is coming. OK. And it also just happens to help, too, that uh, if you're if you're politically, let's say, contrary then, uh, hey, you may also pay. But that's another story entirely. And this right here, this is a bonus slide. What you're looking at is real residential property rates in Canada. One of these days, I'm hoping I can get out of my mother's basement. But uh, but who knows? Let's see. A big hail, brethren. That's honor, accountability, integrity, loyalty. Thank you so much for being here. And these have been the meandering thoughts of a man who lives in his mother's house. Hail, brethren. Hail the chat.